live view for you downtown St. Louis this morning. It is chilly as you, I'd even say it's cold. I mean, we have a wind chill of 22. It's so cold. yeah, keep that in mind mm -hmm. as you're sending the kids out to the bus stop. Definitely going to need a heavy coat this morning. Quarter before seven, we welcome you back. A special Fox Files report on Fox 2 News at 9 tonight. We're going to meet the man behind the Will Smith movie, Concussion. It's changing the way America looks at its favorite sport, football. Fox News' Andy Banker joins us now with more on the doctor's work and a big honor he received in Missouri. Hey, Andy. Good morning, guys. Good morning. So this is the doctor who actually kind of was the first one to say these repeated concussions are leading to long-term permanent mm -hmm. brain yeah. damage and sometimes death. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Bennett Omalu. And Will Smith plays him in the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, his personal story is almost more fascinating to me than his professional work. He's a forensic pathologist, and uh, he discovered CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is brain damage sustained mm -hmm. by repeated blows to the head. And that's the thing that uh, struck me in our interview is that he's not so focused on concussions. That's the name of the movie, but he just wanted to stress again and again and again. The real damage is not from concussions. You don't have to have a concussion to end up with CTE. All you have to do is hit your head all the time, which mm -hmm. is what you do playing football. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't matter if it's in a game or you take a big hit in the game, it's practice. You know, if you, and it sort of scares me because I was a young footballer. I played yeah. from age eight to 18. And yeah. he's like, That's, those are the peak damage years. Because once you get to 18 to 25, your brain is a little more fully developed and you probably sustain less damage in those Sure. Adult years. Yeah. Most NFL players have been playing their whole lives. Just quickly, Andy, uh, what did the doctor say about Will Smith's portrayal of him in the movie Concussion? <laughs> he said he was awesome. Okay. You know, yeah. he said I he mean, was fantastic. Was yeah, and they hung out a lot, you know, during the movie. And he, Kevin, you know more than me. I mean, he had to study. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Will Smith had to study Bennett Omalu mm -hmm. to try and get the dialect down because he has a heavy African accent. He's yeah. from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, I think Will Smith nailed it in a lot of ways. I agree. But uh, my personal feeling about Omalu and having spent some time with him is that he's much more flamboyant, mm -hmm. much more, you know, he's yeah. funny. He's got a certain <laughs> charm, and he is super, super, super smart. Yeah. And so we'll he's see scary that tonight, smart, huh? Very intelligent. Tonight at 9? Yes, and okay. he, he gave the speech at uh, Westminster College in Fulton, and you'll see a lot of that comes out in there. It's, it's more his personal story than just his professional work. Very good. Fascinating. Look That's forward to it. Special tonight on Fox 2 News at 9. We'll be watching. Good to see All you guys. Right. Thanks, you Andy. Too, Andy. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. 647 heading out the door, and we have a couple of overturned crashes. Let's start with... His discovery of a mind-altering brain disease is changing the way America looks at football. It's also making Dr. Bennett Omalu famous, with Will Smith playing him in the movie Concussion. But the man behind the movie says he's not driven by fame or by taking down football. Westminster College in Fulton has honored him now for something much deeper. To understand my story, you need to understand where I came from. 70 years after the great Winston Churchill stood in this very place and warned the world of the Soviet Iron Curtain. I rediscovered the power of education. Another man stood here, far from where his life started as a refugee in war-torn Nigeria, where being portrayed in an American movie was a far-flung dream. When I was a boy, heaven was here, and America was here. Will Smith did a phenomenal job. Yet he says having Will Smith play him in a movie is only part of the story. I hereby confer upon you Dr. Bennett Omalu. As are his educational and professional accomplishments. Everything, he says, goes back to his humble upbringing in a devout Catholic family. Be yourself. And in being myself, I recognize that we all are members of one another. He assures crowds small and large that faith and science are companions in what we all seek, truth. You may deny it. You may distort it. You may do whatever you want to do with the truth, but rest assured, the truth would prevail. I saw myself in Mike Webster. He says everything came together in his autopsy of NFL Hall of Famer Mike Webster. Mike, I can't do this alone. As in the movie, he really does speak to the deceased, and his wife's photos confirm he really has taken brains home from the morgue for further study pursuing truth whenever 
wherever possible. She was taking them to document that she had married a very weird man. But that weird man discovered CTE, a mind-altering brain disease. Stop of the forward progress, and oh boy, you can see him go down. Brought on, Omalu says, head. by repeated head trauma common in contact sports. Like Will Smith said in the movie Concussion, God did not intend for us to play football. And that boy who dreamed of America has caused it to re-examine what it holds true. If it happened in my life, it will happen in my life. Thank you so much. He says CTE is a buildup of protein in the brain that can make you actually lose your mind. He says the most damage is done before the age of 18 when brains are still developing, and that goes for all high contact sports, including hockey and wrestling. Mm, very scary. Think yeah, about he's that. It's an amazing story, though. But in these cases of CTE that you've seen, the only possible cause is head trauma. Yes. It can't be anything else. Okay. And in, in, um, in the mechanism of disease causation, most diseases are caused by a constellation of risk factors, okay? Yes. Um, there is rarely any disease that has one mutually exclusive single causation factor. So, for CTE, the single most significant causation factor or causal factor is the exposure to blunt force trauma of the head, period. Now, like every other disease, you could have aggravating factors and extenuating factors. For example, in CTE, there may be a role for genetic proclivity. Everybody who is exposed to blunt force trauma of the head stands at risk of suffering CTE. But because of yet some unknown polygenetic, many multiple genes, polygenetic proclivity, like every other disease, some people may manifest it more than others. Some people may be more advanced than others. But whenever you play football, not just football, the other high impact, high contact sports like ice hockey, mixed martial arts, boxing, wrestling, rugby. Whenever you play any of these games, you have a 100% risk exposure. Period. There's no question about it. I am yet to examine the brain of a football player, professional football player, whose brain did not have CTE changes. Not one. That is why my position today is that as a modern society, no child under the age of 18 should be allowed to engage in high impact, high contact sports because it is dangerous. Should not play football. As we play today, yes. Not just football, ice hockey, mixed martial arts, wrestling, rugby, boxing. Is there any way to, uh, I'm gonna ask a couple of questions here. It's like a two part question. Is there any way to play it safely? Because you said when you initially found this, you were hoping that it would sort of advance the game of football and make it safer. Um, so one is, is there any way to make it safer and still have the game that America loves? Two, has there been any progress toward that? You know, the, the NFL just yesterday with the announcement of this $100 million grant or funding to play safe, play smart. Um, is, is that a sign of progress? Okay. Like, can there be any progress? Um, you know, do we just have to give up the game? The announcement that was made yesterday was the same announcement that was made over 20 years ago. They set up a committee the true money added to study the problem. So we are reenacting, recycling, recreating the same lies of yesterday. In the announcement, I did not see any place where it was stated that football can cause permanent brain damage, which is the fundamental 
truth that we must begin with. That is the baseline. That is our reference point. So it's window dressing. It is a marketing gimmick. Now, when you are an adult, you're free to do whatever you want to do. I would be one of the first to stand by your side, defend your rights, your freedom and liberty, your free will to do whatever you want to do. If you want to play football, if you want to engage in skydiving, if you want to play Russian roulette, you're an adult, you could do it. But for children, no. Let's wait for the children to reach the age of consent, which is 18. And there's a reason for that, because your brain becomes fully developed from about 18 years old to 25. As a, moral society, as a modern society, whenever we identify a risk, we protect our children from it. If you intentionally or unintentionally expose children to such a risk, that qualifies as child abuse. And child abuse in most jurisdictions in America is defined as intentional or unintentional exposure of a child to the risk of injury or pain and or pain. The injury does not have to occur. For example, if you leave your six-year-old child locked up home alone and you go clubbing, you stand the risk of losing custody right. of that child. But it, there is a difference here because a child is not going to like being beaten physically by a parent, but a child is going to like playing hockey, and do, they do like playing football. And a they do a like child football. who likes to drink alcohol, would you let him drink alcohol? A child, that is why they've not reached the age of consent. They don't understand the implications. And I'm not anti-football or anti-sports. For example, I have a son who is six. There are so many other non-contact sports he could play. You watch the Olympics. So many alternative, more brain-friendly sports. Because again, this boils down to socioeconomics. If you expose a significant number of our children to brain trauma, it undermines their intellectual capacity when they become adults. 